Jesus once said, a prophet was never honored in his own home amongst relatives. And this is true. But what I've also found to be true is that the consequences of sin are most often birthed from within our own homes as well. David, David would experience some of the harshest consequences of sin with Bathsheba in his own home. Not only did he lose his child from Bathsheba, but through the prophet Nathan, the Lord foretold him, behold, I will raise up an adversary against you from your own house. In 2 Samuel chapter 15 is the fruition of that prophecy. David forgives his son Absalom for killing his other son Amnon, but forgiveness did not quench Absalom's hunger for his dad's throne. Here, Absalom begins to plot against his father. Absalom starts to draw attention to his own name and plants himself outside the city gates early every day ingratiating himself to all who would come to see the king, all from all over Israel. In true politician form, he would tell them, look, your case is good, your case is right, but, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you right now. Moreover, Absalom would tell them, oh, that I were made judge of the land, and everyone who has any suit would come to me with their cause, and you know what, I would give them justice. Well, let's fast forward many years, and Absalom would move his headquarters away from Jerusalem to Hebron, where he would start his rebellion and a major assault to take the throne. Absalom wins over David's council Ahithophel, as with many others from Jerusalem, and readies himself to fight for the throne. But what does David, a man after God's own heart, do? He ascended the Mount of Olives, worships and prays to the Lord, and then chooses to leave Jerusalem so that all who dwelled there would not be in jeopardy. Oh, the rich foreshadowing of David's descended King Jesus and how he can be seen here. Only Jesus would suffer the consequences of our sin, not his own like David. The wicked would plot against him as well. And where do we find Jesus? Right before the great battle of Calvary, on the Mount of Olives, praying for strength. And instead of praying for the Lord to thwart his enemy's counsel as David did, Jesus prays God's will be done. The life of David is such a treat for us to see. A flawed man battling with the consequences of his own sin and turning to the Lord day by day. But an even greater treat is to look upon Jesus, David's descendant, that not only avoided the entrapment of sin, but took all of humanity's sin upon himself and conquered it upon the cross at Calvary. You are greatly loved, so go and greatly love.